Seven point one. Twentieth century quiz. One. B. Henry Ford sold the first Model T motor car in 1908. It cost $825 and came in grey, green, blue, and red, but not black. Two. B. The Russian Revolution was in 1917. It started in Saint Petersburg. Three. C. About fifty million people died of flu between 1918 and 1919. It was more than died in the First World War. Four. C. Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin in 1928. He discovered it by accident. Five. A. Superman first appeared in a comic collection in 1938, but the first Superman-only comic appeared in 1939. Six. B. John Atanasoff invented the very first digital computer in the 1930s, but the first programmable computers began to appear about 65 years ago. Seven. C. The first color TV cost one thousand two hundred and ninety-five dollars in nineteen fifty-five. In the nineteen seventies, they cost around three hundred and fifty dollars. This was still very expensive at the time. Eight. A. Neil Armstrong landed on the moon on the twentieth of July. 1969. The second man to walk there was Buzz Aldrin. Nine. C. The Berlin Wall came down on November the ninth, 1989. It was the beginning of the end for communist Europe and the Soviet Union. Ten. A. Universities developed systems of communication between computers in the 1970s and 80s, but the general public first began to use the internet about 25 years ago. 7.2, the good old days. Grandad, when you were a boy, did you have television? Of course, we had television. But it wasn't colour TV like now; it was black and white. The screens weren't very big, like they are now, and there weren't many channels. How many channels were there then? Only two, but that was enough. We loved it, but there were no programmes in the morning. What? So, what time did programmes begin? They didn't start till after four o'clock, when I got home from school. That's when the children's programs were on. There were some brilliant programs for children. I was always sad when they stopped at six o'clock, and the grown-up programs started. That's when I did my homework. Did your mum and dad give you pocket money? Yes, but I worked for it. I did the washing up every day. We didn't have dishwashers in those days. No dishwashers. Oh, that sounds awful. So, how much pocket money did you get? I didn't get much. I got sixpence a week. That's only about three p these days. But oh, it seemed like a lot. I bought comics and sweets with it. What sort of comics did you buy? I bought a comic called The Eagle. That was full of adventure stories. And Superman. What? They had Superman comics then. Oh yes, and they were very exciting to me. They had adverts in them from this strange, amazing country called America. <laughs> I really wanted to go there. So did you? No, people didn't go abroad for their holidays then. It was too expensive. 
I didn't go on a plane till I was a lot older. So where did you go on holiday? To the seaside in England. How did you get there? My dad drove. We had a Ford car, a Ford Prefect. It was. We went to the same place every year. Why did you always go to the same place? Because we all liked it there. Huh. Well, I'm glad I wasn't alive then. It all sounds really boring. Ah, but that's where you're wrong. We didn't have so many things to choose from in those days, and everything we did seemed really exciting. Seven point three, Billy's questions. One. Did you have television? Two. How many TV channels were there? Three. So, what time did programs begin? Four. How much pocket money did you get? Five. What sort of comics did you buy? Six. So, where did you go on holiday? Seven. How did you get there? Eight. Why did you always go to the same place? Seven point four. Questions and answers. One. Where did you go? To the shops. Two. When did you go? Yesterday. Three. Who did you go with? A friend from work. Four. How did you get there? By bus. Five. Why did you go? Because I wanted some new clothes. Six. What did you buy? Some shirts and jumpers. Seven. How many did you buy? Three shirts and two jumpers. Eight. How much did you pay? A hundred and fifty pounds. Seven point five. Listening and pronunciation. One. Where did you want to go? Two. I didn't go to college. Three. Where was he? Four. Do you like it? Five. Why did she come? Six. They weren't here. Seven point six. At a party. You aren't English, are you, Nicole? Where are you from? No, I'm French. I was born in Toulouse. Ah,、oh, is that where you grew up? Yes, I lived with my parents and my brother in a house near the university there.、Hmm. My father worked at the university. Oh, how interesting! What did he do? Was he a teacher? Yes, he was a professor of music. Really? What does he play? He's a brilliant pianist. How wonderful! And what about your mother? What's her job? She's retired now, but she was a doctor. She worked in the hospital. Ah,、oh, so did you go to school in Toulouse? Yes, I went to a Catholic high school. I was there for ten years. Then I went to university.、Mm, what did you study? I studied English and education in Paris. And then I studied for one year in London. Ah, that's why your English is so good. And did you start work straight after that? No, I travelled around Africa for a few months. Then I taught in a school in Senegal. That sounds great. And what's your job now? I teach in a high school in Paris. I teach English and French. I'm sure you're a brilliant teacher. <laughs> anyway. What about you? Seven point seven, noises in the night. 
It was about two o'clock in the morning. Suddenly, I woke up. I heard noises downstairs. I got out of bed silently and went slowly downstairs. There was a light on in the living room. I listened carefully. I could hear two men talking very quietly. They said something about the police. Burglars, I thought. Immediately, I ran back upstairs and phoned the police. Obviously, I was very frightened. Fortunately, the police came quickly. They opened the front door and went into the living room. Then they came upstairs to see me. It's all right now, sir, they explained calmly. We turned off the television for you. 7.8 Special occasions. One. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joseph. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Two. Did you get any cards? Yes, I did. Listen to this. Roses are red, violets are blue, you are my valentine and I love you. Wow! Do you know who it's from? I'm not sure. I know who I want it to be from. Three. Mummy! Daddy! Wake up! It's Christmas! <laughs> what time is it? Oh, six o'clock. Yes, it's morning. Look at the present oh. Father Christmas left for me. Oh, that's lovely. Merry Christmas, darling. Four. Trick, Trick or, or treat! treat! Wow, what fantastic Halloween costumes. You two look very scary. Have you got any sweets to give us? Of course I have. Here you are, two chocolates each. Five. It's midnight! Happy New Year, everyone! Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year! <laughs> Six. Wake up, Mummy! Happy Mother's Day! Thank you, darling. Oh, what beautiful flowers! And chocolates? And a cup of tea? Well, aren't I lucky? And we made you a card. Oh, that's wonderful. Aren't you clever children? Seven. Congratulations! It's great news! Thank you. We're both very happy. Oh, so when's the wedding day? May the 5th. You'll get an invitation. Eight point one food and drink tea coffee wine cheese yogurt pasta ice cream apple juice bread milk Chocolate, broccoli, chicken, bananas, apples, strawberries, potatoes, carrots, peas, onions, tomatoes. Eggs, biscuits, crisps, chips, sausages. 8.2. Were you a fussy eater? Um, oh, good. We have some tomatoes. Um, sorry, Matt. No tomatoes for me. I hate them. Come on, Jake. 
Tomatoes are really good for you. <laughs> I didn't like them much when I was a kid, but I love them now. Mm, I didn't like a lot of things when I was a kid. Ah, uh, you were a fussy eater. What didn't you like? I didn't like any vegetables. Well, I liked potatoes, but only chips. And I hated all green vegetables. <laughs> Do you like them now? Um, not really. Uh, I quite like peas, but I still can't eat broccoli. I hate it. What about fruit? Did you like any fruit? I liked some fruit, but not all. I quite liked bananas and apples, but not strawberries. And I liked fruit juice. <laughs> I drank a lot of orange juice. Yeah. And now you drink a lot of beer. Yeah. And coffee. But I didn't like coffee or tea when I was a kid. Hmm. A lot of kids don't like coffee. I didn't like it until I was 16. Mm -hmm. So what did you like? What were your favourite foods? I liked all the usual things kids like. Ice cream, chocolate, crisps, biscuits and, oh, and sausages. I loved sausages. <laughs> All the unhealthy things. Sausages aren't unhealthy. And I like pasta too, with tomato sauce and some cheese on top. That's healthy. Tomato sauce? But you hate tomatoes. Tomato sauce is different. Hey, let's not cook tonight. Let's go out to Mimo's. Oh, great idea. It's my favourite Italian restaurant. And it isn't too expensive. 8.3. In an Italian restaurant. Good evening, guys. What would you like? Um, I'd like the spaghetti bolognese, please. Same for me, please. I really like spaghetti. Fine. And would you like the wine list? No, thanks. Just a glass of wine for me. Do you like red wine, Matt? Yeah. Well, let's get a bottle of house red. Fine. And some water too, please. Of course. Would you like sparkling or still? Just some tap water, please. No problem. Thanks, guys. Hey, it's our turn to cook for the others tomorrow. What would you like to cook? Mm, I'd like to cook my very favourite meal. And what's that? Toad in the hole. My mum makes the best toad in the hole. I can get her recipe. Toad in the hole? Ugh. What's it made of? Toads? Of course not. <laughs> it's made with sausages. And do you like sausages? I love them. Everyone likes sausages. 8.4 Would you like? Do you like? 1 Excuse me, are you ready to order? Yes, I'd like a steak, please. 2 Would you like a sandwich? No thanks, I'm not hungry. 3. Do you like Ella? Yes, she's very nice. 4. Would you like a cold drink? Yes, please. I'd love one. 5. Can I help you? Yes, we'd like a table for two, please. 6. What do you do in your free time? Well. I like going to the gym. 8.5. Choose the correct answer. 1. What kind of wine do you like? 2. Would you like a cheese and ham sandwich? 3. Who's your favourite author? 4. What do you want for your birthday? 5. Do you have any pets? 6. Would you like some ice cream for dessert? 8.6. Listen and check. 1. What kind of wine do you like? I like French wine, especially red. 2. 
Would you like a cheese and ham sandwich? Just cheese, please. I don't like ham. Three. Who's your favourite author? I like books by Jodie Peacall. Four. What do you want for your birthday? I'd like a new computer. Five. Do you have any pets? I'd like a dog, but Dad says no. Six. Do you want some ice cream for dessert? No, thanks. I don't like ice cream. 8.7. The shopping list. Mum's recipe for toad in the hole looks easy. Good. Would you like me to help? <laughs> it's OK. I like cooking. Um, you can help make the shopping list. OK. Now, do we have any eggs? And how much milk and flour is there? Well, we have some eggs, but not many, just two. How many do we need? Um, three. OK, put eggs on the list. And milk. We need a lot of milk. No problem. We have a lot. And we have a lot of flour, too. Great. And, um, vegetable oil? How much oil is there? There's some, but not a lot. Look. Hmm, that'll do. What about herbs? Do we have any thyme? Uh, I can't see any. OK, we need thyme. Now, um, what else? Sausages. They're very important. We have two, but they look really old and sad. How many do we need? Um, eight. <laughs> Put sausages on the list. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a large packet of frozen peas. Is that it? Yeah. So, first the supermarket, then the cooking. I can't wait to try this. 8.8. .8. Much or many? 1. How much toast would you like? Just one piece, please. Two. How much ice cream do we have left? Not a lot. Just some vanilla. Three. How many people were at the wedding? About 150. Four. How much money do you have in your pocket? Just 50p. Five. How much petrol is there in the car? It's full. Six. How many children does your brother have? Two. A boy and a girl. Seven. How many days is it until your birthday? It's tomorrow. Eight. How much time did you need for this exercise? Just three minutes. 8.9. The History of Ice Cream Who invented ice cream? There is no sure answer to this question. Perhaps it was the Chinese in 200 BC. They used ice to freeze rice with milk. Perhaps it was Alexander the Great or the Roman Emperor Nero, AD 37 to 68. They both liked snow flavoured with fruit and honey. The 13th century. China to Italy. In 1269, Marco Polo travelled to East Asia. He returned home 24 years later with many marvels of the world, including a recipe for ice cream from China. So, the Italians became the first people in Europe to enjoy this luxury. The 16th to the 17th century. Italy, to France, to England. Italian noblewoman Catherine de' Medici was a great fan of ice cream. In 1533, she married Henri II of France and introduced him to the delicious dessert. Later, Charles I of England became an ice cream fan when his French chef made it for a royal banquet. He called it cream ice. 
and paid his chef £500 to keep the recipe secret. However, in 1665, it appeared in an English cookery book by Lady Anne Fanshawe. She called it Icy Cream. For many years, ice cream was a luxury, enjoyed only by royalty and the rich. It wasn't until 1686 that ice cream first appeared on a restaurant menu. A Sicilian, Procopio dei Coltelli, opened the Café Procope in Paris and introduced Italian gelato. It was made of milk, cream, butter and eggs, more like the ice cream we know today. The 18th to the 21st century. America and the world. We don't know exactly when ice cream arrived in America, but it was probably with European settlers in the early 1700s. We do know that the first advertisement appeared in the New York Gazette in 1777, and the first ice cream parlour opened in New York City in 1790. We also know that the first ice cream factory opened in Baltimore in 1851, but grocery shops didn't start selling it until the 1930s. The popularity of ice cream grew and grew. In 1946, the Americans celebrated victory in World War II with ice cream. And in 1984, US President Ronald Reagan made July National Ice Cream Month. 8.10. Ice cream. Some amazing facts. 1. The most popular ice cream flavour is vanilla, followed by chocolate and strawberry. 2. Some of the most unusual flavours are toothpaste, fish and chips, garlic and pizza. 3. President George Washington once spent $200 on ice cream, about $3,000 today. 4. NASA says that ice cream is one of the things most missed by astronauts in space. 5. In the early days of TV, mashed potato was used in cooking shows because ice cream melted under the lights. 6. The busiest day for selling ice cream is Sunday. 7. Americans eat on average 27 litres of ice cream a year. But New Zealanders love it more. They eat 28 litres. 8. The US ice cream industry makes $21 billion a year. 8.11. A meal to remember. 1. John. For me, it has to be this. I was with my girlfriend in France, in Nîmes, in the south. We were students studying the language, and, of course, we didn't have any money. Well very little money. We knew a cheap but good cafe near where we lived, but we could still only afford one meal between us. We ordered one small steak and some chips to share. We finished it in minutes. The man at the next table had a mountain of mussels and some bread and wine. He looked at us and smiled. Then he said, uh, in French of course, I'm not so hungry this evening. Would you like some of these? And he gave us a big bowl of his mussels. The cafe owner saw this and smiled. And then he came over to our table with two bottles of really good white wine and four glasses. And so we all, the cafe patron, the kind man, my girlfriend and I, sat down together and enjoyed delicious food and drink, excellent conversation and a lot of laughs. It was a great evening, and a meal to remember for the rest of my life. 2. Alison This uh, is a very memorable meal for me from many years ago. 
Um, my husband and I were living and working in East Africa on the coast,、uh, in a town called Tanga in Tanzania.、Uh, Tanga's a port, so lots of boats came there from all over the world, and some from North Africa. And、uh, we often had Arab dows there selling rugs. We bought one, a really beautiful one, and we still have it. Anyway, because of this, we、uh, were invited to a meal on board one of the dows. We were really excited. What an experience! We took our ten-month-old daughter with us and sailed out to the dow. We could smell the most fabulous smell as we got near to it. The men welcomed us warmly and helped us aboard with the baby. And there, in the middle of the deck, was one huge bowl of the most delicious chicken curry.、Uh, it looked and smelt fantastic. Then all the men and my husband sat down on the deck round the bowl and started eating, just with their hands, taking out large pieces of chicken. Unfortunately. According to custom, because I was a woman, I couldn't eat with them. I、uh, just held the baby and watched. Finally, they finished, and it was my turn. The only problem was that there was no chicken left in the curry, just some sauce. That didn't please me at all, and、uh, <laughs> it's why I will always remember that meal. Eight point twelve, shopping list. Aspirin, plasters, deodorant, toothpaste, shampoo, sun cream, batteries, scissors, adapter, notebook. Pens and pencils, envelopes, sellotape, magazine, chocolate. Eight point thirteen, shopping in the high street. One. I'd like some batteries, please. What sort do you want? Double A, please. Would you like a packet of four or six? Six is too many. Four is enough. Anything else? That's all, thanks. Two. Have you got any baby shampoo, please? Yes, we have. A small or large? Ah,、uh, the large is too big. The small is fine. Anything else? No, thanks. How much is that? Three. I'm looking for a nice pen for a present. What about this one? It's twenty-five pounds. No, that's too much. I don't want to spend that much. Well, this one is twelve pounds. That's better. And I need some pencils as well. There are ten pencils in this packet. But I only want two. I'm afraid I only have packets of ten. Sorry. Eight point fourteen, sounding polite. I'd like a latte, please. I want a hot chocolate. Give me some cheesecake. Can I have an egg sandwich, please? Ah,、uh, two cups of tea. Could you bring me some ketchup? Eight point fifteen. In a cafe. Hi. What can I get you? I'd like a latte, please. Sure. To have in or take away? Have in. And、um, what size do you want? Small, medium, or large? Large, please. Would you like anything to eat? A croissant? Some toast? I'd like some toast, please. No problem. And can I have some honey with the toast? Of course. Take a seat, and I'll bring it over.
9.1. London or New York. 1. It's on the River Thames. 2. It was first called New Amsterdam. 3. It's sometimes called the Big Apple. 4. It's home to Wembley Stadium. 5. It has 5,800 skyscrapers. 6. The highest building is 310 meters. 7. The people living there speak 800 different languages. 8. Paddington Bear went to stay there. 9.2. Listen and check. 1. London is on the River Thames. 2. New York was first called New Amsterdam. 3. New York is sometimes called the Big Apple. 4. London is home to Wembley Stadium. 5. New York has 5,800 skyscrapers. 6. The highest building in London is 310 meters. 7. The people living in New York speak 800 different languages. 8. Paddington Bear went to stay in London. 9.3. Which do you prefer? Which do you prefer? London or New York? Well, I'm American, so of course I love New York more. I think London's more interesting. And it's a lot bigger than New York. True. New York is much smaller than London. But the buildings are so much taller, and for me, that's more exciting. Hmm. I guess the weather's better in New York. Well, people think so, but it's worse than London for rain. Really? 9.4. I think it's taller. I think the Freedom Tower is taller than the Shard, but I think the Shard is more beautiful. I think the underground is more expensive than the subway, and the trains are more crowded. There are more parks in London, and they are bigger and nicer, I think. I think the weather in New York is hotter in summer and colder in winter. It's also wetter, but I think New York is sunnier. I think the people in New York are friendlier, but I think Londoners are more polite. 9.5 Larry, an American living and working in London. Well, I like both New York and London, but they're good for different things. New York is easier to walk around because it's smaller. The underground is better than the subway. It's much nicer, but it is more expensive. Of course, there are a lot of older buildings in London, so it's kind of more interesting. And I really love the parks here. My favorite is Regent's Park, but there are so many. I read that nearly half of London is green. That's amazing. I like it here in summer. It's a lot hotter in New York, and it can get way too hot there. Winters are warmer here in London, but they're so gray. In New York, winters are colder and snowier, but sunnier. As for the people, well, Generally, Americans are friendlier to strangers than the British. Life is faster in New York, though, and Londoners are probably more polite. 9.6. Comparing cities. 1. New York is older than London. No, it isn't. New York is much more modern. 2. Tokyo is cheaper than Bangkok. No, it isn't. 
Tokyo is much more expensive. 3. Amsterdam is bigger than Paris. No, it isn't. Amsterdam is much smaller. 4. Johannesburg is safer than Cape Town. No, it isn't. Johannesburg is much more dangerous. 5. The traffic in Mexico City is better than in Sao Paulo. No, it isn't. It's much worse. 9.7. A Brit in New York. So, Gemma, you're British, but you live in New York, yes? Yes, that's right. I'm from Manchester. And uh, here in New York, do you live on your own? No, I'm here with my husband, Luke. We both come from Manchester. I see. And have you both got jobs here? Yes, I've got a really good job. I work for a fashion company. Oh, great. And has Luke got a good job too? Yes, he's got a wonderful job. He's a gardener and he works in Central Park. Wow, nice place to work. So where do you live? Have you got an apartment? Yes, we've got a lovely apartment in Brooklyn. We take the subway to work. So you haven't got a car here? No, we haven't. We had a car in Manchester, but here we go everywhere on public transport. It's much easier. The traffic's terrible in New York. I know. Well, thanks for answering my questions. Have a nice day. 9.8. Have got. 1. I've got a nice car. 2. We've got three children. 3. He's got a business in South London. 4. Have you got a lot of friends? 5. How many brothers and sisters have you got? 6. I haven't got any brothers. I've got a sister called Emily. 7. Jack hasn't got a sister. 8. Have we got any homework today? 9.9. .9. New York Central Park Central Park is one of the most amazing sights in the world. An enormous swimming pool of green surrounded by skyscrapers. Central Park is America's oldest and biggest city park and the most popular. It appears in more than 350 movies. It's busiest on Sundays, with nearly a quarter of a million visitors, so try and find a quieter time to visit. Here's a guide to some of the best things to see. Bow Bridge is one of the most beautiful old iron bridges in the world. Perhaps you recognize it. It's the most popular movie location in the park. The carousel is the largest in North America. With its 58 brightly colored horses, it's obviously a favorite with children. Woolman Ice Rink. The most wonderful thing you can do on a winter's evening is go ice skating here. You can skate to the music under the skyscrapers and stars. Cleopatra's Needle is definitely the oldest thing in the park. It's from Egypt and is three and a half thousand years old. Belvedere Castle is the highest point in the park, so you can get the best views from here. Strawberry Fields is a garden named after one of the most famous Beatles songs. John Lennon lived and died in New York. The Imagine mosaic here is in memory of him. 9.10. It's the biggest. 1. The tallest building in Europe is the Federation Tower in Moscow. It's 374 metres. 2. The most expensive hotel in London is the Lanesborough. The Royal Suite there costs £27,000 per night.
Three. The world's biggest car park is at the West Edmonton Mall in Canada. It has twenty thousand spaces. Four. The most popular tourist attraction is the Las Vegas Strip. It has forty million visitors a year. Five. The hottest city in the world is Awaz in Iran. The highest temperature ever reached there was fifty-four degrees centigrade. Six. The oldest city is Jericho in the Palestinian territories. It dates back eleven thousand years. Nine point eleven. Satnav directions. Continue along George Street, past the Bristol Hotel, and over the bridge. At the roundabout, take the first exit on the left, and drive down Park Hill. In two hundred yards, at the junction, turn right onto Bagley Wood Road. Continue up the hill along Bagley Wood Road and through the wood. Drive under the railway bridge, and the destination is on your right, Sherford Petrol Station. Nine point twelve. Directions. One. Go along George Street, past the hotel, and over the river. Turn right at the roundabout. Go along Lake Road with the lake on your left. And then take the first turning on the left onto Station Road. Keep going along Station Road, and you'll see it in front of you. The road stops there, so you can't miss it. Two. Continue along George Street. At the roundabout, take the third exit onto Lake Road. Continue along Lake Road. In one hundred yards. At the roundabout, turn left onto High Street. Continue along High Street and drive under the bridge. The destination is on your right. Three. Go over the bridge, and when you come to the roundabout, follow the sign to the town centre. You will come to another roundabout, and you want to go straight over that one. And drive into Town Hall Square. Keep left, pass the statue, and take the road on the left, where there's traffic lights. You'll see it on your right, and there's a car park opposite on your left. Ten point one, a call in the night. Uh, who? It's me, Dad. Oh, oh, Millie.、Uh, uh, Millie, are you all right? Hi, Dad. I'm just phoning to see how you and Mum are. Oh, Millie, we're fine, but it's two o'clock in the morning here. We're in bed, sleeping. Well, I'm not sleeping now. Oh, sorry, Dad. I forgot the time difference.、Oh, well, shh, shh. Your Mum's still sleeping.、Uh, how are you doing? Is everything okay? It's great. It's lunchtime here in Oz. We're having a barbecue on the beach. We're cooking steak and sausages. Ah,、oh, well, that's wonderful, Helen. I'm so tired. I'll call you tomorrow morning, eight o'clock our time and seven your time. Okay. Okay, Dad. Love you. Ten point two. What are they doing? What's Millie doing? She's phoning her parents. Why is she phoning? Because she wants to know how they are. What's her dad doing? He's talking to Millie. He's not sleeping. What's her mum doing? She's sleeping. What are Millie's friends doing? They're having a barbecue. Where are they having the barbecue? On the beach. What are they cooking? Steak and sausages. Ten point three. Where are you going? Conversation one, on a train.
Hi, Mum. Hi, Tony. Where are you? I'm on the train. I'm just doing a bit of work on my laptop. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to Birmingham for the day to see some friends. You know Ed and Kay. Oh yes. Do they live in Birmingham? No, they don't. But they're staying with Ed's mum at the moment. She's not feeling very well. Oh dear. I hope she's better soon. Well, I'm just phoning to see how you are and to tell you. Conversation two. Packing to go. Jane. Hi, Nina. Am I disturbing you? No, no, you're not. I'm just packing for Dubai. I'm trying to decide which clothes to take. So, what's the temperature in Dubai at the moment? Thirty-four degrees. Phew. Well, I'm just phoning to wish you good luck and bon voyage. Thanks, Jane. I'm really nervous. You'll be great. You always speak so well at conferences. Thanks, Jane. Ten point four. What are they doing? One. What are you reading? A detective story. I love detective stories. Two. What are you watching? The news. I always watch the ten o'clock news. Three. Where are you going? To my bedroom. I need an early night. Four. Why are you crying? Because it's a sad film. I didn't know it was so sad. Five. Who are you texting? My girlfriend. She says she loves me. Ten point five. Correct the sentences. One. She's reading a magazine. Two. He's playing a video game. Three. He's going out with friends. Four. She's laughing because it's a funny film. Five. He's phoning his girlfriend. Ten point six. Who's who at the art exhibition? Oh dear, I don't know anybody. Who are they all? Don't worry, they're all very nice. I'll tell you who everybody is. Can you see that man over there? The man who's standing in front of the window. Yes, the man wearing the bow tie. That's Eric. He's American from New York. He has an art shop there. He often visits London to buy pictures. He's very rich and very funny. Ah,、oh, yes, I can see that. The woman next to him is laughing a lot. Who is she? That's Charlotte. She's lovely, very clever. She's a professor at the university. She teaches art history. Hmm. I like her bag. And who's that on their left? She's wearing a beautiful pink scarf and drinking champagne. That's Helena. She's a writer. She writes stories for children. They're excellent. A very nice lady.、Hmm. And who's the man she's talking to? He's got a beard and he's wearing a big black hat. Ah, that's Anton. He's an artist. A very interesting man. He lives and works in Paris most of the time. That. Picture over there is one of his. It's called the tree. Really? Wow! It's beautiful. Okay, so that's Eric and Charlotte, Helena and Anton. Now, who are those two over there? The guys with the brochure. That they're looking at Anton's painting. Ah, yes. That's Leon and Peter Vine. They're brothers, and they're both art dealers. And do they work in London? Yes, they do. They have an art gallery in Bond Street. Come with me. I'll introduce you to them, and I'll get you a brochure. Thank you. Ten point seven. One. 
Where does Eric come from? New York. Who is he talking to? Charlotte. Two. What does Charlotte do? She's a professor. What is she doing? She's laughing at Eric's joke. Three. What is Helena drinking? Champagne. What does she write? Stories for children. Four. What is Anton wearing? A big black hat. Where does he live? Paris. Five. Where do Leon and Peter work? In Bond Street, in London. What are they looking at? Anton's painting. Ten point eight. Whose is it? One. Whose is the black hat? It's Anton's. Whose is the black hat? It's his. Two. Whose are the glasses? They're Charlotte's. Whose are the glasses? They're hers. Three. Whose is the brochure? It's Leon's and Peter's. Whose is the brochure? It's theirs. Ten point nine. Whose, or whose? A. That's an amazing video game. Who's winning? B. Wow! Look at that sports car. Whose is it? C. Whose phone is this? It's not mine. D. I'm going to the pub. Who's coming? E. Do you know whose scarf this is? F. Who's the tallest in our class? G. Ava and Lena are identical twins. I can never tell who's who. H. There are books all over the floor. Whose are they? Ten point ten. Whose is it? Whose is this tennis racket? It's mine. What's it doing here? I'm playing tennis this afternoon. Oh, have a good game. Ten point eleven. What's happening in the world right now? One. At this moment, a hundred and sixteen people are getting married. The longest marriage ever lasted an amazing ninety years. In nineteen twenty-five, Karam Chand, then twenty years old, married his wife Katari, age thirteen, in India. They celebrated their ninetieth anniversary in two thousand and fifteen. Karam died just six weeks later. Two. At this moment. Two hundred and fifty-seven babies are being born, and one hundred and seven people are dying. On average, about a hundred and thirty-two million people are born, and fifty-five million die every year. Three. At this moment, ten thousand planes are flying above the Earth. There are also one thousand and seventy-one satellites going round the Earth, one of which is the International Space Station. Four. At this moment, forty-eight million people are making phone calls. Do you know that more people in the world have mobile phones than toilets, and the average person checks his or her phone a hundred and ten times a day? Five. At this moment, a hundred and forty-four million people are sending emails. People also text a lot. Worldwide, they send nearly nine trillion texts every year. Six. 
At this moment, 15,000 people are downloading songs on iTunes. There are 26 million songs you can download on iTunes. I Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas is the most downloaded song ever. 7. At this moment, the top 10 billionaires are earning on average $20,732 every minute. Sad to say that the average person worldwide is earning just 0.013 of a dollar in this same minute. Bill Gates, the American businessman who founded Microsoft, is the richest billionaire in the world. He is worth $76.6 billion. 8. At this moment, 4,500 people are buying McDonald's hamburgers. McDonald's has more than 34,000 restaurants worldwide and employs 1.8 million people. 9. At this moment, We are throwing away 2,500 tonnes of rubbish. Every year, we create about 1.4 trillion kilos of rubbish worldwide. 46% is food waste, 27% is paper and plastic. 10. At this moment, 14 meteors are falling to earth. The world's biggest meteor fell on Namibia in Africa about 80,000 years ago. It's called Hoba and is between 190 and 410 million years old. 11. At this moment, lightning is striking the earth in 360 places. The average temperature of lightning is around 20,000 degrees Celsius hotter than the sun. 12. At this moment, 0.15 of an animal is becoming extinct. Animals in danger include the black rhino and the mountain gorilla in Africa, and many species of frog. 10.12 Describing people. 1. She looks happy. She's smiling. It's a cold day, so she's wearing a warm red scarf and hat and long black boots. She's walking in the snow. 2. He's got a dark beard and he's wearing a cap and sunglasses. But I don't know why. It's not a very sunny day. Three. He's not very tall. His friend's much taller. He's wearing shorts and trainers and carrying a ball. I think it's a basketball. Four. She's really pretty. She's got beautiful long red hair and I think she's in love. She looks very happy. 10.13. Everyday Situations 1. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it's definitely getting warmer now. Yes, I didn't even bring a jacket today. <laughs> Me neither. 2. Sorry I'm late again. Not to worry, we're just starting. It's the trains. Another cancellation this morning. Oh. Oh, I know. It's awful, isn't it? OK, a y let's get started. 3. Can I help you, sir? Yes. I'm looking for a bike for my 11 year old son. OK. How about this mountain bike?、Oh, that looks good. How much is it? 4. Would you like to go out for a drink after work? I'd love to. Which pub? The Red Lion. A lot of us are going. Great. See you later. Five. Excuse me, this machine isn't working. Oh dear. Let me have a look. It breaks all the time. I put my money in and nothing happened. 
Don't worry, I'll give you the money back. 6. I can't find my phone. Oh, not again. You had it in the coffee bar. Did you leave it there? No, I'm sure I didn't. Oh, it's here somewhere. Call my number. Oh. There it is. Oh, it's in one of the shopping bags. Seven. Thanks for the dinner invite, but I'm afraid I can't come. Sorry. Ah, oh, that's a pity. Maybe another time. I'm going away on business that weekend. Never mind. We'll meet up when you're back. Eight. Patrick and I are expecting a baby. Oh, wow! That's fantastic news. Congratulations. Thanks. We're both pretty excited. And a bit nervous. We can understand that. Nine. Bye. Have a good journey. Thanks. See you in a couple of days. I hope you have a good time. I'm sure we will. Bye. Eleven point one. That's the plan. One. Jeff. When I get home, I'm going to take my dogs for a walk. Two. Jenny and family. When we arrive in Corfu, we're going to jump straight in the hotel pool. Three. Jamie. When I grow up, I'm going to play for Arsenal. Four. Derek. When I retire, I'm going to learn to play golf. Five. Grace and Molly. When we finish work, we're going to see a film. Six. Hannah. When the kids are in bed, I'm going to sit down and have a glass of wine. Seven. Carl and Petra. When this lesson ends, we're going to have a coffee together. 11.2 What's Jeff going to do? He's going to take his dogs for a walk. 11.3 Correct the plans. 1. When Jeff gets home, he's going to do some work. He isn't going to do any work. He's going to take his dogs for a walk. 2. When Jenny and family arrive in Corfu, they're going to do some shopping. They aren't going to do any shopping. They're going to jump straight in the hotel pool. 3. When Jamie grows up, he's going to play for Chelsea. He isn't going to play for Chelsea. He's going to play for Arsenal. 4. When Derek retires, he's going to do nothing all day. He isn't going to do nothing all day. He's going to learn to play golf. 5. When Grace and Molly finish work, they're going to see a play. They aren't going to see a play. They're going to see a film. 6. When the kids are in bed, Hannah's going to do the washing. She isn't going to do the washing. She's going to sit down and have a glass of wine. 7. When this lesson ends, Carl and Petra are going to do their homework. They aren't going to do their homework. They're going to have a coffee. 11.4. What's going to happen? 1. Where's Jamie gone? I can't see him anywhere. Look, he's up there. Careful, Jamie! Oh, no. He's going to fall off that wall. 2. Oh, no. That's my sister with her new boyfriend. <laughs> so in love, aren't they? <laughs> Don't look. 
They're going to kiss each other. Three. Can we not watch the film yet? No, sorry. The Wi-Fi's really slow at the moment. It's going to take ages to download. Four. What lovely singing! There's so much talent in this village. Who's next? It's Jeff's wife, Lucy. She's going to play the cello. Five. How are Alice and Theo these days? I think they're busy getting everything ready. She's going to have the baby very soon. Six. What are those men doing outside Mrs. Simpson's house? Oh, I don't know. Look, they've got a ladder, and oh, they're going to clean her windows. Seven. Come on, Annabelle! Come on! You can do it! Look, she's moving in front. Whoa! She's going to win the race. Eight. Oh, this is hopeless. I know. I think there's an accident ahead. Nothing's moving. We're going to miss our flight. Eleven point five. It sounds like one. You stupid idiot! Two. <laughs> Bless you. Three. I'll go. Oh, hi, Angie. Four. <sighs> Five. Oi, you! Stop! You're under arrest! Okay, okay. I'll come quietly. Six. Seven. Oh, it's so sad. Eight. Eleven point six. Rob's schedule. Next week's very busy. You have a car to the airport at six thirty a.m. on Monday morning. To get a flight to where? <sighs> Brussels. Remember? Ah、oh, yes. And、uh, why am I going there? To give a presentation. At the Exmed conference. Oh yes, of course. 
You're coming back on Tuesday morning, and you're going to Restaurant Victoire at one o'clock to have lunch with our chairman. Eleven point seven, Rob's diary. Oh, Angela, this is our last diary meeting. I can't believe you're leaving the company. I don't know what I'm going to do without you. Hmm. Yes. Well, as always, next week's very busy. You have a car to the airport at six thirty a.m. on Monday morning. To get a flight to where? Oh, Brussels. Remember? Ah, yes. And、um, why am I going there?、Oh, to give a presentation at the Exmed conference. Oh yes, of course. You're coming back on Tuesday morning, and you're going to Restaurant Victoire at one o'clock to have lunch with our chairman. Then your driver's going to take you to St John's School to pick Molly up. Ah yes,、uh, Susan can't pick her up on Tuesday. But what do I do with Molly? It's her best friend's birthday party. You're taking her there. Oh yes, I can leave her there and come back to work. But don't forget, you're going to the barber's at four thirty. Oh yes, to have a haircut. <laughs> Finally. Hmm. Yes, it certainly is time for that. And then the driver's taking you to the station to get the five thirty train to Paddington. What? Why am I going to London? You're going to the theatre to see a play with your wife. Oh yes, Susan's in London that day, and Molly's staying at her friend's because we're going to see Romeo and Juliet. And you're celebrating? Yes, it's our wedding anniversary. Oh, did you remember to order the flowers? Yes, of course. And I got a nice present for her in that new jewellery shop. Brilliant. Oh, Angela, you think of everything. I'm going to be so lost without you. Hmm. I know. Eleven point eight. What's the weather going to be like? And here's Carol with the weather forecast for Europe. Thanks, Andrew. Well, at the moment. There's some wet and windy weather over the UK and Scandinavia, and this is going to move to the east over Poland and Germany. Temperatures in Berlin and Warsaw are about 21 degrees Celsius right now, but it's cooler in London, more like 18 degrees, and cooler still in Oslo, around 17 there. Further east. It's cool and cloudy in Moscow, where the temperature is a welcome fifteen degrees after all the extreme summer heat there. To the south, it's a bit warmer, twenty-three degrees in Budapest, and even warmer as we get further south, so twenty-six degrees in Rome. But it's going to be cloudy and showery across the north of Italy before long. So temperatures aren't going to stay as high there. In northern Turkey, there's some heavy rain, and it's already getting stormy. So temperatures won't get much higher than 21 degrees in Istanbul. France is going to be cool and cloudy in the north, 20 degrees in Paris, but much warmer and sunnier in the south, with a high of 27 degrees in Nice. The rest of the Mediterranean is going to be warm and dry too. Portugal and Spain will see plenty of late summer sunshine, with temperatures as high as 29 degrees in Madrid and Lisbon. It's going to be warmer still in Greece, and we're probably going to reach 30 degrees in Athens. And that's your European weather for the next 24 hours. I'll be back at lunchtime with an update. Thanks, Carol. And now the news headline. Eleven point nine. What's the weather like?
11.10. What's the weather like today? What's the weather like today? It's cool and cloudy. And what was it like yesterday? Oh, it was wet and windy. And what's it going to be like tomorrow? I think it's going to be warm and sunny. 11.11. .11. Making suggestions. 1. Good weather. What a lovely day. Yeah, it's really warm and sunny. What shall we do? Shall we go for a walk? 2. Bad weather. What an awful day. It's raining again. I know. It's so cold and wet. Mm. What shall we do? Let's stay in and watch a film. 11.12 1. Good weather. What a lovely day. Yeah, it's really warm and sunny. What shall we do? Shall we go for a walk? Oh, no. It's too hot to walk. OK. Why don't we go to the beach? Good idea. We could take a picnic. I'll help you make it. 2. Bad weather. What an awful day. It's raining again. I know. It's so cold and wet. Mm. What shall we do? Let's stay in and watch a film. No, that's boring. We did that last night. OK, then. Why don't we go out for a coffee? Yes. We could go to Café Nero. Great. I'll get my coat and an umbrella. 11.13. Matthew and Emma's holiday. Where are they going? To the south of France. When are they going? On May the 21st. How are they travelling? By plane and hired car. How long are they staying? For ten days. Where are they staying? In a house in a village. What are they going to do? They're going to swim, go shopping in the markets, read and relax and eat in good restaurants. 11.14 He's been everywhere. Hi, Lexi. I hear you and Abby are planning a trip to Europe. <sighs> oh, hi, Rod. Yeah, we leave next Monday for Rome. Ah, Rome. I know it well. I've been to Rome many times. Well, I've never been there. It's my first time in Europe. <laughs> really? Never? That's amazing. I've... Uh, I know. You've travelled a lot. Yes, I have. But what about your friend, Abby? Is it her first time? No. She's been to London and Paris before, but she hasn't been to Rome. Ah, uh, London and Paris. Wonderful cities. You know, I studied in Paris for a year before I went to work in New York. Another wonderful city. Now... Have you ever been to the US? No, Rudd, of course I haven't. I haven't travelled much at all. Oh, I've been to North and South America so many times. And I've... OK, Rudd, you've been everywhere. I've been nowhere. Well, I... Oh, dear, look at the time. Got to go. Abby's waiting for me. Oh. We've got so much to do. Bye, Rudd. Maybe one day you can tell me more about your travels. Yeah, one day, never. 12.2 1. I've been to Rome many times. 2. I've never been there. 3. She's been to London and Paris. 4. She hasn't been to Rome. 5. Have you ever been to the US? 6. I haven't travelled much at all. 7. I've been to North and South America. 8. You've been everywhere. 
I've been nowhere. 12.3. Have you ever? Have you ever been to Australia? No, I haven't. Have you ever been to Italy? Yes, I have. Oh, when did you go? Two years ago. Where did you go? Rome, Florence and Venice. Wow. Did you have a good time? Yes, I did. It was fantastic. 12.4. Are we ready yet? Where's the list? I've got it. OK, let's check through. Uh, we've already bought new backpacks. We did that a while ago. Mm, they look quite big. I hope we can carry them. No worries. I haven't finished packing mine yet. Have you? Not yet. Just one or two more things to go in. Oh, have you collected the euros from the bank? Yep. I've just collected 500 for you and 500 for me. All our savings. I hope it's enough. No worries. We can stay with my aunt in London. Have you emailed her yet? Yes, she's just emailed back. She's going to meet us at the airport when we fly into London from Rome. Fantastic. Hey, look. I've just found out the weather in Rome for next week. Hot and sunny. Yeah, it's going to be so good. We're going to leave winter here and arrive in the middle of summer in Europe. What about the tickets? I think we only need passports, but I've printed e-tickets. I haven't checked in online yet. You can only do that 24 hours before the flight. Oh, Abby, I am so excited. I can't wait. 12.5. Just, already and yet. 1. Have you finished packing? No, not yet. I've only just started. 2. Do you need to buy a new backpack? No, I've already got one. I bought it last week. 3. Have you heard from your aunt yet? Yes, I've just had an email from her, but I haven't read it yet. 12.6. Europe, here we come. I'm really excited about my trip to Europe. I haven't travelled much outside Australia before. Just once, two years ago, when I went on holiday to Bali with my family. But I've never been to Europe or the US. I often travel inside Australia. Last year, I flew to Perth to visit my cousin who lives there. It's a five-hour flight from Sydney, where I live. Australia's a big country. Also, I've been up to Cairns in the north three times. I learned to scuba dive there on the Great Barrier Reef. We've just finished packing. The taxi hasn't arrived yet. We're waiting for it to take us to the airport. I've never flown on a 747 before. It's a very long flight. It takes 20 hours to get to Rome, but I'm not going to sleep on the journey. I'm going to watch films all the way. It's so exciting. I can't wait. 12.7. No, not yet. 1. Have you checked your emails yet? Yes, I've just checked them, but there wasn't one from you. 2. Have you had breakfast yet? No, I've just got up. I don't want much breakfast. Just a coffee and some toast. 3. Have you made the coffee yet? No, I haven't. Why don't you make it? 4. Have you done the shopping yet? No, I haven't. I don't think we need anything from the shops. 5. Have you tidied your room yet? Yes, I have. It took ages. Go and look if you don't believe me. 6. Have you taken the dog for a walk yet? No, I haven't. It's just started to rain. 7. Have you met the new student yet? Yes, I just have. 
I met her on the way to school this morning. 8. Have you finished the exercise? Yes, I've just finished it. Thank goodness. 12.8. Who is this famous explorer? 1. He was an Italian explorer, but it was the Spanish king who paid for his voyages. He wanted to sail west from Europe, not east like other explorers. He sailed four times across the Atlantic Ocean. During his first voyage in 1492, he landed in what we now call America. 2. He was born in Iceland. His father, Eric the Red, was also an explorer. He was the first European to discover North America many years before Christopher Columbus. 3. He was an American astronaut who became the first person to walk on the moon. He was the commander of Apollo 11, which landed on the moon on the 20th of July 1969. He and his co-pilot, Buzz Aldrin, spent two and a half hours walking on the surface. 4. He was a mountaineer from New Zealand. On the 29th of May 1953, he and Sherpa Singh were the first people to climb to the summit of Mount Everest. Some years later, he went overland to the South and North Poles, and so became the first person to reach the Poles and Everest. 12.9. Conversations with Take and Get. 1. Oh, is it me or is this room really hot? It's you. Why don't you take off your jumper? 2. Is your office near where you live? No. It takes a long time to get to work most days. 3. Why was your dad so angry? Well, I didn't get home until after midnight last night. I was at Rob's party. 4. Excuse me, how often are there exhibitions in the museum? They take place regularly every two months. Here's an information brochure. 5. Do you like learning English? It's OK, but sometimes I get really bored. It takes forever to become really fluent. 12.10. Take or get. 1. The best way to get to the airport is to take a taxi. 2. How long does it take if you go by train? 3. I haven't got a camera. I always take photos with my phone. 4. Sue has taken her driving test three times and she's failed every time. 5. Are you still getting ready? We're going to be so late! 6. The doctor told me to take it easy if I want to get better soon. 7. It rained on the day we got married. We got very wet, but still had a great day. 8. You can't get on the bus with that big dog. Please get off. 9. Slow down. Take your time. We're not in a hurry. 10. I get so many emails, I don't have time to answer them all. 12.11. Travel Announcements 1. The 11.55 for Newcastle stopping at Peterborough, York and Darlington is now ready to board on Platform 10. There is a buffet car on this train. Please check that you have all your luggage with you. 2. This is the number 22 for Piccadilly Circus. Next stop, Green Park. Stand back from the doors, please. 3. 
flight BA1536 to New York is now ready for boarding at gate 58. All passengers in rows 12 to 20, please board first. Passengers are reminded to keep their hand luggage with them at all times. 12.12. .12. Where are they? Conversation 1. Next, please. A return ticket to Oxford, please. Are you coming back today? Yes, I am. Then you'll want a day return. That's £15.40. Can I pay contactless? Yes, of course. Thank you. What time does the next train leave? 9.55. The platform number has just gone up on the departures board. Oh, yes, I can see. Thank you very much. Have a good journey. Conversation 2 Excuse me, does the number 24 go to the Natural History Museum? No, it doesn't. You need the 157. It stops just near the museum. Where can I get the 157? Um, from that bus stop over there. And where can I get a ticket? There's a machine next to the bus stop. Oh, OK. Thanks for your help. Don't mention it. 12.12 .12. We're on our way. Good morning. Have you checked in online? Yes, we have. Fine. How many suitcases have you got? We haven't got suitcases. Just these backpacks. Oh, yes. Can you put them on the scales? Uh, <coughs> here you are. They're fine. And how many pieces of hand luggage? Just these two bags. They're fine too. You board from gate 9 at 10.20. Where do we go now? To the security check and departure gate. They're over there. Have a nice flight. Thanks very much. Goodbye. 12.14. A poem. Why did you leave? When did you leave? I left at four in the morning. When did you leave? When the house was asleep. Where have you gone? To a huge, crowded city. Where have you gone? To a place where no one knows me. What did you take? Some money. Not my mobile phone. What did you take? Not much. Just memories. How did you travel? By taxi, by plane. How did you travel? I travelled alone. I have always travelled alone. Why did you leave? Because I wanted to see the world. Why did you leave? Because nobody listened. No one has ever listened to me. Why don't they listen? I don't know. I have never known. Why don't they listen? Because I have very little to say. When are you coming home? When I have become somebody. Do not wait. <laughs>